France was a really big part of my life. I loved him from the first day when I saw him playing, because it was just so different, so special. France was an outstanding player. A great person who respected people and inspired them. Without Franz Beckenbauer, Bayern would not be the club it is today. He made way for a lot of generations to come after and is still the role model in, in so many things that he did. Munich. It was here in 1945 that Franz Beckenbauer was born. It was just, I'd say, a very, very happy time. Because there was no envy back then. There were no social differences. Everyone was the same, and you felt that. Nobody needed to be jealous of others because they now wore particularly nice shoes. That's how it was. That's why I describe my youth as a very happy time. It's either school or football. If you prefer high school when you get older, it's good if you've got the better leaving certificate. But then I said in the spur of the moment, no, we'll stay in technical school, stay with our football. He was definitely incredibly driven. That's a nice story. It was a school football match against Genze Lieselschule. And since he was also a good goalkeeper, the coach put him in goal. He was still tiny at the time and kept conceding. Then, with ten minutes to go, he stood in goal crying, so the teacher came over and relieved him of the situation by putting him up front. He then scored two goals in ten minutes and was happy again. Then I got to play with the bigger kids from time to time. That obviously helped shape me because I was by far the smallest. You have to have a certain amount of perseverance to assert yourself there. You have to picture it. Beautiful grass field, two goals, no nets. It was two of my jumpers. And behind the goal, the little ones were always retrieving the balls and kicking them back. And France was there too. At some point, it was probably an odd number. It was five against six. Then we said, OK, we'll let him play. And then he apparently did quite well. And then he was always allowed to play. Giesing is 1860 territory. So obviously we thought we were going to Sexic. And then the famous event. It was one of the last games at a school tournament in Neubebeck or somewhere around there. Then there was the incident. The centre-half slapped me or clipped me around the ears during the game. And obviously, it was then clear to me that I wasn't going to that hooligan club. After the game, I said, hey, I'm not going to Sexy. I'll see if I can find a place at Bayern. You can go. That's nothing to do with me. But I'm definitely not going there. And then they declared their solidarity. And the five of us went to Bayern. And so, in 1964, Beckenbauer joined Bayern München, where Franz from Giesing would become Der Kaiser. Named Sportsman of the Year 1965 by readers of a big South German newspaper, beating none other than 1860 goalkeeper Peter Radenkovic in second. Critics and football experts all agree that Beckenbauer is German football's greatest talent in years. I've known Franz since we were kids. We played together at youth level. Franz's development has been divine. You can't imagine a better person. Beckenbauer. 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 2-0. We then won the cup that season as a promoted team, the National Cup. 
And a year later, in 1967, we won the European Cup Winners' Cup. Our young team was always on the up. Chick Tchaikovsky, the first coach, was a bit like a friend. And that creeps in with young people. Then you're a bit disorganized, not so focused. And then they brought in Branko Zebic, a tough coach, and that had an effect. And then in 1969, we won our first Bundesliga title. Our warmest congratulations to the new champions. Just looking at that axis alone, they had Meyer, Beckenbauer and Müller. When you have such outstanding players, you can build a team around them. Beckenbauer. Beckenbauer. Roscoe. And Beckenbauer. The next attack is launched by Schwarzenbeck. Now you see Franz Beckenbauer in a great move. 1-0 for Bayern, only five minutes gone. We were together for 10 years, with a few exceptions. Someone would join us or one wasn't so good, so we gave him up. We were a troop, as they say in Bavaria. We were a tight-knit group. We certainly had some bad games, but we always spoke our minds and scolded each other. We almost didn't need a coach because we sorted everything out amongst ourselves. Whenever something went wrong, we'd sit down together with a few beers and we'd talk it out. I was there, France was there, then the bull, Franz Roth, Schwarzenbeck, it was all the players. We'd say, come here, we have to talk now. And then we got on with it. After the break, Captain Beckenbauer galvanized his team. A deflected shot brought it back to 5-3 six minutes later, and Beckenbauer created some breathing space in his own way. France is without a doubt a terrific player. And France is a player who likes to play football, who likes to get the others involved, who really inspires them during the game and really speaks his mind. France was a guy who really got to grips with the structure of the team. If something wasn't right somewhere, if something wasn't working, he'd come to me and say, listen, we can't do this and we don't have to do this and that. And we discussed it and sometimes he was right and sometimes I was right. That's true. We're proud of our FC Bayern. And I believe we can be proud of our FC Bayern. But I want to assure you of one thing, and I agree with my teammates, we are just as proud of you, our fans. Thank you. Between 1966 and 1976, Beckenbauer won four Bundesliga titles, four DFB Cups, and four European trophies with Bayern. Franz Beckenbauer made us socially acceptable. Along with the Olympic Stadium, Franz Beckenbauer transformed football from a low grade into a part of society. Bayern also attacked. Beckenbauer. Beckenbauer. And Franz crowned his performance with a goal. Three all. But it was thanks to his success with the German national team that Beckenbauer finally achieved legendary status. Germany's national football team, the most expensive choir in the world, here recording their first record, Football is Our Life. Fans thought the move from the stadium to the studio was a clever tactical manoeuvre by the coach to stimulate his players' confidence. An opportunity to ask Helmut Schoen what concept he was using to prepare his team for the 1974 World Cup. The footballing ideal would be a mixture of both, namely the great individual technique of the South Americans with the sober practicality of the European players.
think no matter where we met, it was always a pleasure. It was always fun. I think no matter where we met, it was always a pleasure. It was always fun. Because they were good guys who played for Bayern. And we became European champions in 1972 and world champions in 1974 because it wasn't just football, but also interpersonal relationships. There are many anecdotes, but I can't tell you all of them. I can remember one. We were young, around 20, and Detmar Kramer was assistant coach. And we were somewhere in the UK. I don't know if it was in England or Scotland. We'd had an international match. And after dinner, the two of us boys were supposed to go to bed and go to sleep. And the two of us thought, let's have a look around, get some air. And we came out of the room and were just about to take three steps when Detmar came out from behind a pillar. He just had a sense for it. And we were afraid that was the end for us. But everything was handled well and it all ended well. However, I sometimes got annoyed with him because and I stand by this today, he didn't score enough goals as such a good player, given how I viewed football. He's a great player, even better in attack than defence. And that was also overlooked a bit. And I always looked for arguments with him and had arguments with him, just like Sepp Herberger used to have arguments with Fritz Walter. I told him, you have to score more goals. And I think he realises that today. As a player, he would have become even greater, even bigger with more goals. To finish his career, Beckenbauer embarked on one final big adventure. It was back in 77. I was no longer happy with the whole situation, including my life situation. I was separated from my family, I had tax problems, Bayern had to renew itself. The old guard, that was over. The successful time was over. I could have helped to give Bayern a new face, but that was too exhausting for me. I didn't want to do that anymore, so then I looked for and found a new life. Of course, I didn't realize that I would like it so much, America. I remember visiting him in New York. We sat in Central Park for hours. Nobody recognized him. And we talked and talked about all sorts of things, family stories. New York also had an incredible impact on him. You learned English. His whole nature was simply much more open. That was a great time. Very proud. And it is a big honor for me to have this wonderful day and to tell him to celebrate with the beautiful people and the beautiful crowds in the world. When you call it, even back then, the Comedy League, you have to imagine that at the time the best players in the world all played in America. Pelé played, Johan Neeskens, Johan Cruyff, almost the entire 74 Dutch team played in America. Eusebio, George Best. In other words, anyone who was anyone in the 60s and 70s played in this league in America. And some of the football played was outstanding. Perhaps not quite as athletic and fast as here. Most of them were over 30, but you couldn't underestimate it. Look at those three players at the end of the line. Are you serious? Beckenbauer, Pele, and Kinaya, three of the greatest that have ever played the game. In hindsight, that step enriched my life. In October 1980, Beckenbauer briefly interrupted his New York chapter as he returned back to the Bundesliga with Hamburg. 
Ein Fußball. A football immigrant has returned to his homeland. Franz Beckenbauer, who his admirers still call the Kaiser, returned to Germany after a three and a half year stint in the American Professional League. Kaiser Franz leads his defense like in the old days. The highly paid and confident Hamburg players willingly follow him on the pitch. I remember a story where Ernst Trappel said, Franz, you can't play as a sweeper for us. You have to play as a holding midfielder. We all thought, what's going to happen now? But he took it in his stride. He played really well, it has to be said. We won the Bundesliga that year, and he played a huge part in that. Kaiser Franz, Kaiser Franz still has a few tricks up his sleeve. Beckenbauer had been laying the foundations for future fame and fortune, even as a very young player. In 1966, we were in Switzerland, my husband and I. When we got home, we saw that my neighbour, who had a key, had put thousands of letters in bundles in the small room from the 1966 World Cup. Around 1,100 to 1,200 letters came every day for 14 days. After the 1966 World Cup, he came back and said, I've signed a contract for 1,000 Deutschmark. And I said, that's ridiculous. We're not doing that. We'll get you a contract for 100,000 marks. That was Knorr soup. Of course, he had to suffer a bit. In Bremen, when they walked out, there were always shouts of Suppenkasper, the picky eater from Knorr adverts. But that was the beginning of advertising in German sport. What a finish from Franz Beckenbauer! And what a finish from Knorr! Stew soups, hearty, savoury, simply great. Mmm, power on the plate, Knorr on the table. Mm. Quality soup. Robert Schwan actually kept everything that could be kept away from him, away from him. It was difficult to get close to him. And I don't think Franz cared too much about that either. That was really the sole responsibility of Robert Schwan. And as it turned out, in retrospect, he really did an excellent job and was actually the first general manager to look after a player. And he'd been doing that since France was 18. Beckenbauer set the bar high, also later as a coach. Although he did once say, I don't want to have anything more to do with football later on. And a career as a coach is probably out of the question for me. Franz never wanted to be anything. We had a chat with Helmut Schön in 1974. Helmut said, you could take over my job one day. Franz said, oh no, not me. And what happened 20 years later? He was national team manager. He's finally got his coach's bench and has no reason to stand up. Or does he? It wasn't as if everyone was shouting, hooray, right from the start. The coaches' guild came along and said, why? We've been doing our course for six months, and he gets handed his coaching license? It wasn't as if the red carpet was laid out for me. And the team was in a bad shape after the 1984 European Championships in France. And I got everyone together back then, the media first and foremost, and I said, watch out. If you continue to be so negative about the national team, we'll never get a team together. We all have to stick together. If we want to build a powerful national team again, we all have to stick together. Your position on the left. Liddy, go up top and score. Franz Beckenbauer was, of course, always the shining light in the truest sense of the word. Even as a young boy, he was a great idol for me. And then, of course, it was unimaginable at the time that he would become my manager at some point between the 1980s and 1990. We had a wonderful relationship for six years and enjoyed great successes. Incredible.
Der Franz war generell während dieser Welt. Franz was generally very relaxed during that World Cup. But he did have a certain amount of tension, a certain amount of concentration. But he didn't see it in a dogged way, like perhaps four years earlier in Mexico. I believe that as a team we also benefited from Franz's experience in Mexico in 1986. He allowed us to work with concentration. He also knew that we had our sights set on becoming world champions, that we were focused on that. But nevertheless, he'd sometimes say in the evenings, not everyone has to be home at 11 o'clock. It can also be 1 o'clock or 2 o'clock. Of course, the players used the opportunity to go out, but they didn't abuse it. It was fair play between the coach and the players at that World Cup. When France starts something, everything makes sense. Everything. And that's just France. France has a golden touch. That was also true as caretaker coach at Bayern, winning the UEFA Cup, the Bundesliga, and understanding the players. A personal anecdote, he was the coach who took me to the training camp in Tenerife in 1994 or late 1993, and he subbed me on in the first game after the winter break against Stuttgart. That means I played my first game as a professional under Franz Beckenbauer. I'm still grateful to him to this day because if that hadn't been the case, you never know what would have happened to me. I just wanted football. That was my passion. Just football. I didn't care about anything else. Of course, my family suffered as a result, that's for sure, because I didn't take care of the children's upbringing. I just wanted to play football. That was my passion. And I didn't think about how it would develop. It was simply the joy and love of football that was the deciding factor. The Kaiser's turbulent family life only became calm and stable with his last wife, Heidi. Beckenbauer became the man behind the scenes at Bayern, a shining light as the living motto of an entire club. Mir san mir means that everyone at this club, regardless of age, whether they're 17, 18, 19 or 30, when they sign their first contract with Bayern München, this signature means everyone has to internalize the fact that they have to win every game and every title. No more, no less. It was a disgrace today, the way we played. But that has already been apparent in recent weeks and months. It has nothing to do with football. It's a different sport that we play. Leon played football, we didn't play football. We watched, we didn't get involved. That's not football, that's Uwe Saylor's team of retired players. Everything but football. But before we get to the agenda items, Uli, last night was the cup game. We had a very difficult time against Stuttgart kickers. I thought the first half was pretty decent. I saw it on television. You were there yourself. Maybe you can give us a brief impression. I remember very clearly when I met Franz Beckenbauer for the first time at Bayern, at the mighty Bayern. And he said to me, so much money for a goalkeeper. What's that all about? I can still remember that very well. Nothing was handed to us on a plate. We're envied and criticised from many sides. Well, they've got it all. But we didn't steal anything. We earned it all ourselves over the last few decades. And the crowning glory is, of course, the Allianz Arena. And I'm delighted and naturally a little proud because I've also played my part in it. Beckenbauer was in charge of the organising committee that brought the 2006 World Cup to Germany. And the winner is Deutschland. Not without controversy, but an inspiring tournament. First and foremost, that he's the best person to meet ever. He was really good company, he was funny, he was intelligent, he was everything you want to be yourself, pretty much. Not many people are called a shining light, but it applies to him. Beckenbauer curls the ball with the outside of his boot. France was an exceptional footballer, has always been an exceptional footballer. France mastered everything. 
the best German footballer of all time. There was no one better than Franz Beckenbauer, and there will be no one better in all aspects. He's done so much for German football over the years. And that's why, for me, he's incomparable.